This is a story of my Tarloff journey, from debilitating pain to surgery to mentoring other Tarloff patients to working in my garden. A journey of pain, hope, and progress. Well, we've been married 40, almost 43 years. Uh, we met, we were both teaching at a private school. I was the bookkeeper and Tom was a history teacher, yeah. coach, and <laughs> jack of all trades. Yes. And a romance bloomed from there because, well, I don't know, we just saw each other and decided, hey, this is, this is going to be good for us. And we've been married for 43 years, as I said, and we have a blended family. Uh, we each had a boy and a girl. Correct. <laughs> and they were like step, stair steps, I should say. And it was a boy, girl, boy, girl. And they were just the best of friends. Um, it, it was wonderful to see them blend together. Uh, Tom went on to be um, head of middle school at St. John's School. And I went into real estate. Bad timing, but I went into real estate. That year, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was bad. But mm. uh, we've um, loved absolutely every moment we've had together. I'm not going to say it's been all roses because it hasn't. But he has absolutely been my lifeline to so many things, and especially through my Tarloff journey. He understood it. He was my, my caregiver. He was the person that calmed me when I was in so much pain I couldn't stand it, and he was the person to get in there and, yay, we're, you know, you're feeling good, look what you're doing now. And uh, I thank God every day for him. Well, <clears throat> you know, we, we talk a lot about the roads we've been down together in our marriage, and uh, well, you're not wearing them today, but I have a pair of earrings I made that are coins from one of our trips, and it's kind of symbolic of all of that. But this one, this one was tough because uh, you're right. We've been everything for each other for so long, and to see her at a point in life where, you know, hey, we're gonna relax, we're gonna do this, that, and the other, we don't have to get up in the morning unless we want to, and so on. Suddenly, um, she's pretty much incapacitated, in a lot of pain, a lot of the time. And constant pain, I think psychologically and emotionally, is one of the things that will tear you up quicker than anything. And so it got tough. And since there did not seem to be any of the ordinary treatments, the things you do for your back hurts, you get a heating pad, you do whatever you do. None of that works. The pain shots don't work, so you're on pain meds. And there are pieces of that period between, you know, 2013 and when you had the operation in uh, October of 14. There are pieces that you don't remember. We talk about it now, you get, I did what? Yep, you did. <laughs> yes. The medication was so strong. She'd wake up at night um, talking in her sleep seeing things that weren't there. It was really that bad, and it was, we gotta find an answer. And Ken Lee did spot the tar lobs, and they're not well known. He knew what they were, and he said right away, if it were your discs and this and that, I would fix you up, you'd be on your way. But he said, I know what these are, I can't do it. There's only a very handful of people that do. And of course, he recommended us here. And we went that route. Um, I, I eat breakfast with a bunch of old guys uh, at the golf club. I don't play golf, but half of us go there to talk. So we're down there, and one of them is a, is a retired cardiologist, and the guy is brilliant. He's just a brilliant physician. And I said to him, Tarlov cyst, and he went, ah, I remember hearing something about that in med school. And he got on his phone and said, oh, yeah, Tarlov, 19, the name for Tarlov, 1938. But even he, and he knows more about medicine than any one person I've ever seen across the spectrum of it. But he didn't know what they were, right off the bat. I mean, he knew generally, but not, and, and he was talking about there isn't much way to deal with them. And I said, well, we think we have one. We were both in a private education, Lutheran schools, and both retired in Memphis. Um, then we decided we better come on back to Texas. This is where our roots are. And with the four children, they all, they're spread out all over, but our youngest son, Jim, is, lives in Houston, so that seemed like the better place to be. We would get 
daughter lives in Kansas City. We didn't want to be around shoveling snow and ice <laughs> and, and things like that. So we decided, okay, um, let's go back to Houston. And we landed in Missouri City at a sea in a plantation in a beautiful home. One story, which is what we wanted, and we were so excited about the move. Before that, my back started hurting. And of course, you know, we're moving and we're getting the house ready and it was painful, but I just walked through the pain because I thought, eh, okay, you know, I'm getting old. I was almost 70 when we, I was 70 when we moved. So, you know, you get all aches and pains then. So we came down and I moved down and it was, um, we moved in in May and by October of that year, I was in such pain, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And we went to see Dr. Lee in um, January of 2014. And we had to jump through all the, all the loops. And Tom explained um, Dr. Lee's perspective, and he was wonderful. And he, he said, the only man that I would, he said, I've sent two other patients to Dr. Fagenbaum and they've all had success stories. So, and I said, that's great, we agreed. And then we started pursuing Dr. Fagenbaum because it was so difficult to get in to see him because he is world renowned, he is the man to go to. And he, to be very honest, and he saved my life because he gave me back whatever years I have left after the surgery. And, but, but leading up to the surgery, it was not fun. We loved to travel. Uh, we made a, several, two or three trips to, um, to Europe. Uh, we did a walking tour of Germany and that was really bad. <laughs> Climbing up the steps of this cathedral, it was a... Erfurt, yeah. Ever, yeah, it was Erfurt, like, yeah. yeah, it was like, I don't know, it seemed like a hundred steps, but I literally had to crawl up because the pain was so bad. So when we got back, I knew something was wrong, but I blew it off because that's just me. Um, I loved working in the garden. We had a beautiful lot, a corner lot uh, in Memphis. I, I loved working in the garden. I loved going out with the girls. I loved working for the church and, and all that wonderful stuff that meant so much to me personally. Uh, we put sort of our life in hold when I went in pain, when I started having this pain. And we missed some parts of the mm -hmm. life that we could have had. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. When Dr. Lee said, Dr. Fagenbaum, we said together, we've got to go. I mean, yeah. because he is, he's the closest, but he's the one that had the Tarloff Disease Institute. And he was the one that we felt like was on the cutting edge of so many other things, so many other good things that were, would be happening. And um, we got on the waiting list to see, to see him. And we came up and he said, yes, you have four Tarloff cysts. And, and I can't remember, it was one or two that were impeding on the spine. And you are a candidate for surgery. And I thought, oh God, you know, when? Well, I think that was in August. It was. It was, it, it was, was in August. Mm -hmm. So we got on the list and we, the first available slot was the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, it was November 20th, which was the day before our anniversary, uh, <laughs> our 40th anniversary, I believe. But we didn't care, you know, we were coming, we were coming to Dallas, we were, you know, we were getting settled. But between August and, and that particular time, I think I just took a nosedive because mm -hmm. the pain was just, and I guess I let the pain sort of overtake me, which I don't usually do. I can mm -hmm. walk out of pain. But I couldn't do it this time. And I knew it was really, really hard. It was very, very hard on me, and extremely hard on, on Sweet Tom. And then mm -hmm. our grandson was living with us. And he, it was, it really, you know, he was 20 years old and he had never seen his grandmother like that. And he was just totally, he, 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 would, he would cry when I cried, you know, because it was, and he's such a sensitive guy. And um, so when I came up, um, it was, 
it was something that I've been praying for. And I came up here and I knew that whatever the outcome was going to be, it was going to be better than what I had. It had to be better because I didn't have a life. I mean, I had Tom taking care of me. He did the laundry. He went to the grocery store. He took the dog to the vet. I mean, he walked the dog. He did all those things. And I wanted to do those things. I wanted to be back alive because I felt dead inside sometimes. And uh, when I came up here, I thought, you know, if it's only 90%, I'm good with that. Mm. And I'm still fighting a little bit of pain, but that's the, the bones are knitting back together again. And he said, this is, you know, this is the hard part because you could give me two or three years. And I said, okay, that's fine. Mm. And um, it was, it was hard the first couple of months after the surgery, but from what I gather, everybody said it was hard. And um, mm. the pain was a different kind of pain. It wasn't a Tarloff. It was my body giving me pain notification. But by January, I was almost out of pain. I would, right now, I don't very seldom take a pain pill. Very seldom. Well, when we came up from, for our first consultation with Dr. Fagenbaum, um, it, was a, it was a terrible drive because poor Tom had to literally stop 45 minutes outside of Houston, and that wasn't very far. And he stopped about every hour since then because I had to literally get out and walk. And I was trying to like walk away from the pain so I could get back in the car and we could come on up. And it was a very, very difficult, very difficult. Car rides are probably mm -hmm. one of the worst things that you could have, especially when you're dealing with Tarloff cysts. Yeah, she was on a lot of medication and the car, I think we're still driving the Forerunner, but right. is a truck-based SUV and I loved it, but it it does a little of this. And so every time we'd stop to get out, and it was more, not so much you walked around, you limped around <laughs> and you were, you know, this way, very physically agitated in motion in every which way and I was, you know, afraid you would trip, fall, and then I'd get, don't baby me. I said, okay, <laughs> I won't baby you, but I will. And so it was, it was a tough trip up here. And we were coming as it happens. We got lucky in that your, your surgery was scheduled for November late before our anniversary, but they called and said there'd been a cancellation. And we had, I think, less than a week's notice on that. Could you take About two weeks? Was it or what? Two it was less than two weeks, yeah. ten days maybe. Uh, and you, anyway, we got here uh, and you had it done on the twenty eighth of October. But I said immediately, "We'll take it. If it's today, we'll take it. We'll get up there," because we wanted to get get with the program. So we did. And th what this is all about, in part, I think, is to to get it out there that this really is a, a needed procedure and that it works that the technique works. And it's, it's touchy because he is, he is actually working on a nerve itself. It's not merely aspirating. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we're doing a, an incision of a sort. And nerves take a long time to heal, so it's, it's touchy. After surgery, there was, it, was lo it was painful, and they had you on a morphine drip for a couple of days, but I was tired of being doped up, so I tried to wean myself off by saying, no, I don't want that. Um, we left the hospital, went to our hotel for a couple of days, and then we went on to Houston. That was bad. That ride from our residence in all the way to Houston was horrible. I think I cried most of the way. Uh, just because I couldn't find a comfortable position and I was still in somewhat, uh, some sort of pain. Uh, it was a long, long, long trip. I think it took us like, instead of four and a half hours, I think it took us like seven hours to get home because we were constantly stopping and I, Tom would like help me, pour me out of the car and then help me get back in. But I just felt like I needed to stretch. It was so hard uh, for me to realize that it was over, and I would be out of pain because I had had a lot of um, 
encouragement from the nurses here about the pain that you're having now. It's not a Tarloff pain anymore. It's the surgery pain. It's the, it's the pain that's of healing. And I think that's what gave me so much hope. That's what gave me hope was the pain of healing. And after six weeks, uh, my pain was almost gone. And I knew I had hope. And I knew really and truly there was going to be a lot of progress from then on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what my journey was all about. My journey was hope and progress. And we just muddled through it for a while, and, and that was okay, too. But the most important thing, I think, is that we knew further down the line that I was going to be okay. And within three months, I was walking around in my garden and, and telling him where to plant flowers. But we had a beautiful, beautiful yard that year, and I actually got to put some in the ground. But this past year has been fabulous because it has been the garden of the month is gorgeous. <laughs> we met Katie when we first came in, and she was awesome, awesome. She was very low-key, very understanding. She, she was uh, the girl that just had all the answers, and she was so um, compassionate towards people, had, towards me, towards me. So uh, when we got home, it was call Katie if you have any questions. And I would have questions, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I think I'm bothering her, and I didn't want to call. But whenever I did, she'd say, well, Barbara, I haven't heard from you in a while. What's up? <laughs> and, and I called her for certain things throughout the year, but she was very sympathetic, very caring, and extremely knowledgeable, and just a person that you could just talk to, you know, and then, you know, well, how are your kids? How's your dog kind of thing? And it was wonderful. The most exciting part for me, it's been 18 months since my, since my Tarloff surgery. And I, every day I feel different, but it's a strong feeling. It's, it's just progress. It's little tiny baby steps. That's fine for me because I know that it's always going to get better. And the kids and I go for walks. We look for um, deer. We go deer hunting, and they, we have a fish pond, and the kids come, and you know we're holding them over there with their shirts. So they're in there. We've trained our fish just to come up, and they nibble at the children's fingers, and they, the kids get so giggly, and they come in and they they feed the fish, and they feed Mr. Tom's fish. That's who they are. Yeah. But they come yeah. and they feed the fish, and it just it brings such joy to me to be able to do that to be able to participate with them. Um, it was a long 18 months. It was a long 18 months, but it, every step of the way has been worth it. Over, over the 18 months since the surgery, it, you're describing it pretty well. It's been a, it, a curve upward, a little blip here and there, but generally up. And it, I think every month that's gone by, I see more and more of the lady I married, <laughs> you know, the way she always was, which is the Energizer Bunny. You know, she's got that kind of way about her and gets into things and she's an organizer par excellence. And so she's been working with uh, a neighbor of ours involved in a program called uh, uh, Mothers of Preschool Children, MOPS for short, and Barbara's a mentor in that program and she's starting one at our church now uh, just things like that um, she's got a book club going which you hosted and you you know we have people in she feels like having company we've had people for dinner which for months we didn't it was pretty much you know taken care of within so yeah watching her come back to the person she really is and always has been has been great uh, we traveled to Memphis, in fact, to help, um, I love it at our age, an elderly friend of ours uh, <laughs> prepare to sell her house. And we had told her, because her husband's been gone a few years, we said, we'll be back up there to help you out with that final business and put together an estate sale and all of that. Who was, who was in charge? Who did a great deal of the physical labor? Right here. And that's who she is. And that's great to see. Can't, can't beat it.
Katie has given my name to several women oh, yeah. who are either just found out they had Tarloff or they have the opportunity to have Tarloff surgery with Dr. Fagenbaum. And there's been many a time that I've spent an hour, an hour and a half on the phone. They would call and they'd be very timid and they'd say, Katie from, and I'd say, come on, let's talk, you know. And I've always discussed, uh, I always talked about my journey with Tarloff cyst. I think everybody's journey is a little bit different mm -hmm. or it's completely different. And I guess there must have been maybe 10 or 15 people that have called me in the last year. Some are afraid, they're so afraid of the outcome. It may not be perfect for them. But as I said, with my Tarloff journey, I'm just happy for where I am right now and every day's a gift. And I thank Dr. Fagenbaum so much for that. Thank you.